Mark Goff, a uh, standing UKIP candidate here in Harlow. Um, you've stood before in, in different constituencies, so, but here you're in your hometown. Why standing? Well, I think it's a, a simple case that if we are to be believing the leader of the Conservative Party, this election is about Brexit. Uh, unfortunately, here in Harlow, uh, we have an MP who voted to remain. Um, despite what he will suddenly tell you now, um, I mean, let's, re let's recall that on the 24th of June, the day after the referendum, he rushed out to any media areas that would listen to him, saying that, oh, my heart said Brexit, but my head said remain. Well, if that's the case, 68.1% of the people here in Harlow voted to leave. And he is their elected representative should be asking them how he votes, in my opinion, because the job of an MP is public service, not self-service. And that's, I'm afraid, is, is what should happen. So I have to say that of the candidates, I'm the only official proper Brexiteer, the only person who voted leave, like the vast majority of the people in Harlow. And if that's what their objective is to achieve this general election, then... Uh, as the, as the saying goes, I'm the only show in town. But you say you're the only show in town, but in fact, has the inverted commas circus left town? In that um, you look at the vote of the county, all those county council election votes two two weeks ago. So that that must have been devastating, yeah. I th don't think it was unexpected. Um, I think you know there are the, the media outlets across the country would have you believe that we're a, a one-issue party and that suddenly Brexit's been achieved. Well, if that's the case, why is, she calling, why is the leader of the Conservative Party calling the general election to ask for more support? Um, apparently she wants to go into two years of negotiations. Well, the question remains then, uh, who do you trust to be involved and make sure that those Brexit negotiations are to the benefit of the country, one of Farage's stormtroopers or one of 185 out of the 330 Conservative MPs who voted for May. Do you think Theresa May, going off slightly off subject for a second so to speak, do you think Theresa May can deliver Brexit? It's a well, you would believe that it's not just Theresa May. She's got a, a team that she's put around her in a, a number of cases of, of, some, of, of three pretty big good Brexiteers. Um, you know, I spent 15 years of my political life here in Harlow as a Conservative from 1997 to, to 2012, and those are three of the people that I very much respect within the Conservative Party. Uh, that said, um, You've got to remember that the vast majority of the cabinet, including the leader herself, voted Remain, including our local MP. Now the question is, do you believe that they have the ability to negotiate everything? I mean, what we've seen is there's been rumours of sliding back on just about everything. Um, if whatever you look at, whether you look at you know remaining or not remaining in the in the single market or are we going to get tariffs and are we going to get this and are we going to get that? The question is, if you've got someone who was originally who voted Remain, are they just going to be a yes man and vote and do exactly what the Conservative Party wants them to do and trape off through the right, the right door and, and do, the, do the vote exactly as they're told? Or do you want someone who will actually scrutinise it and say, well, actually, this isn't good enough, this needs improvement, this should be done better, this is what the people of Great Britain and Harlow wanted, and this is what we expect you to achieve, not this sliding negotiation model. Um, and that's very much what I'm offering the people of Harlow. What else though? Okay, what else? You know, you said UKIP is not just a one, one um, subject party. Any other issues that are really concerning you at the moment? Well, one of the main reasons I left the Conservative Party and joined UKIP was the fact that there was I had an issue with an awful lot of the priorities that were going on at the time. I mean, one of the, the final straw was obviously the Omni Shambles 2012 George Osborne budget. Um, but I'm 
and I shortly after that election I found myself looking in the mirror saying well actually can I justify these policies to myself let alone going out there justifying them to the electorate and I thought well actually we have an underfunded NHS a dreadful situation in both mental and social care that need improvement we were giving far too much money in my opinion to overseas aid while we had nearly a million people using food banks in this country and in this town uh, and I saw that we had you know, a ridiculous idea of spending a vast sum of money on Nature's 2 train system when frankly um, the problem isn't going north-south, the problem is going east-west as most people in, in Harlow would know. So it just struck me that my natural home was going to be UKIP and they were the, and they were the party with the policies as we probably saw from the 2015 general election manifesto. It was the best manifesto on the table. It was fully costed, unlike any other manifesto. Um, and that's exactly why I still stand behind it today. This must have been quite a rush, though, for you. I know for everybody, for rush for you. How, how are you going to be able to get out and campaign? And, or have you been campaigning? And uh, yes, I'm, you know I'm, out, I'm out and about. Um, I'm, doing, I'm doing the best I can. Um, people would have seen I had a brief stint on the, on the BBC on Friday, I think. Um, I've got my 20 seconds, I think. Um, very much talking about um, the the health secretary coming to promise a, a hospital that we in UKIP were talking about two years ago. Um, it's rather uncanny how much the Conservative Party seem to want to take our clothes while spending most of their time saying we don't matter. Well, we must matter because we had nearly four, four million votes at the last general election. Um, we won the 2014 local and European elections here in Harlow. Um, so if we don't matter, then they must be saying that to an awful lot of people who believed in us enough to vote for us. How are you going to how are you going to gauge success on June eighth, stroke ninth? I think oh, I think the one thing about this election is one thing that people have known about me in my twenty years in politics is that I'm not bad at gauging what's going to happen and I can honestly say for the first time in 20 years I don't think I actually have a clue what's going to happen I really don't because I think it, it, it depends exactly um, how the electorate go and what the turnout is I think we've got to remember that it's very un it's you know we've, we've got to justify that there will be a certain amount of voter fatigue because what we've got to remember is this is the third time in less than a year we're asking them to go to the polls you know, they've had the EU referendum last month, or earlier in this month we had the, the county council elections and now less than a month later we're expecting them to go and do a general election. Um, you know, I think many of us remember the news when, they, when we saw that, that lady who said, oh no, not again. And I think we can, we can sympathise, <laughs> frankly, even as, even as candidates. Um, you know, I just sport the, the county council elections over in Chelmsford. Um, and after six weeks of that, um, I was looking around for people who were uh, able to do foot transplants. You know, it's um, <laughs> we're uh, <laughs> we're quite tired as candidates as well. But you know, this but it, is it what looked, we've got. It looked going back again. It looked like the the seven thousand odd people, not odd people, seven thousand people who voted UKIP in twenty. 13 yeah, they're definitely ago. not odd. Not odd, no. no. <laughs> um, it looks like, due to circumstances, they may well have gone and voted Conservative. Now, they, you know, so in the Essex County Council election in Harlow, they didn't have candidates to choose from. Now they've got a candidate, a UKIP candidate. Are you, so, in conclusion, is it just about the Brexit and Remain that you want them to think about, or is it a series of items they want to think about, you know, when it comes to ballot? Well, I think that the main thing is, let's, let's face it, the whole election has supposedly been called for Brexit. I mean, I think there's a strong argument that says it's really been called because one Monday morning the Electoral Commission review into the, into the 20 seats where uh, the Conservatives overspent at the last general election um, wasn't looking good. And I think if I was in the shoes of the leader of the Conservative Party with a 17-seat majority, the last thing I'd want is 20 by-elections uh, where everyone piled into just 20 seats to, uh, to change the results to the extent that they probably won't be quite like the opinion polls as she would have liked. Um, 
that's the real reason let's let's be honest so a general election so you can spread people far and wide and uh, while you've got some decent opinion polls that's the that's the true reason for this general election let's not beat about the bush but in fact you're in positive mood definitely definitely uh, i think that you know we're we're, we're hearing that uh, the brexit means brexit well fairly meaningless phrase i think from the conservative party because at the end of the day they may as well say sausages mean sausages well that's also true sausages do mean sausages but there are a lot of different varieties of sausages and there's probably less varieties of sausages than there is varieties of Brexit. So do you want uh, do you want a far do you want a Farage stormtrooper making sure it's delivered properly? Or do you want a conservative yes man? Or one of the other three remainers on the ballot paper? That's the choice. Mark Goff, thank you very much for your time.